there's nothing there, boys. <laughs> Hi, Robert. Over here. Hi, Swedish hey. Television. Hi, Mike. You look very cool, confident, methodical in there. How do you assess your own performance? Um, yeah, I think uh, I let the feeling out process go on a little too long in the first round. Started a little slower than I probably would have liked, if in hindsight, you know. But that's always the beauty of hindsight. And then after after I gauged the space, controlled it, worked out his range. Yeah, went to work. Now, yet again, you establish yourself, obviously, after the win, back in the winning column and for contention. Now, what do you see for your own future now? Um, well, I've got to get some revenge on some bait patisseries that were plaguing me all week. They're just teasing me. And then there's Christmas. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I hear there's rumours of an Australia card. I would love to fight in my backyard. And I think that's the next move for me as for who I'm fighting. Mate, I'm a fiend for progress. I want to go forward. I'm hunting that gold still. So I'm always going to be lurking around, just destroying whoever they put in front of me until I get a chance to gobble up that gold. Now, and final question for me. Seeing how you uh, showed, showed up tonight, now, how did you get back after the, the double losses against Adesanya and coming back and performing the way you did tonight? Um, yeah, I got back in the gym, the boys slapped me out of it, the coaches put me through some hard yards, and honestly, by the end of a camp, when I've, I've given everything to the camp, and the coaches have given everything to the camp, you have to fight, you want to fight, because otherwise all that work is for, for nothing, there's no way to, to, to gauge what works, what does not work, what gets better, what doesn't, this is, this is my craft, this is what I was born to do. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I could take five years off doing absolutely nothing and you put me in a cage with someone, I'm going to throw. <laughs> Thank you. Rob, um, just for you, were you a little surprised he kind of did the fake handshake? <laughs> oh, yeah, a little. It was grubby. <laughs> it, was just, it, was just, it was just grubby. It was a grubby thing to do. My coaches anticipated him trying to do something like that to annoy me. It did. <laughs> you know, it did annoy me. It was, it was a grubby act. Um, a lot's made of, like, his chin, obviously, and I know you knew that going into this fight that he could take a shot, but were you surprised that some of those head kicks didn't seem to get him down to the canvas at all? Not really. It's, uh, I wasn't really on bank, and I wasn't really banking on just one shot putting him away. I wanted it to hit him, like I planned to hit him for 15 minutes and I worked relentlessly during the camp to make every shot count and it did, it hurt him, you could see it in his eyes, you could see it in his movements, you could see him coming out in two, coming out in three, he wasn't the same man walking in there and uh, yeah, you know, I'm happy with that. Do you think this performance sort of once again cements that there's this division and there's you and Israel at the top and then there's a gap between you two and everyone else? I'm the most dangerous man in the division. You know, Israel's the champ. He beat me twice. Hats off to him for that. And I, he's, he's a great fighter. He really is. And I think stylistically he's a great fighter. I still think I'm the most dangerous man in the division. Because I, uh, I win. I win a lot. And I make people hate fighting. Like, I take the fight out of them. Because I just, yeah, that, that's what I do. I get in there and uh, I get to work. Rob, Rob, just yeah. over here. Uh, in front of you. Um... There was a lot of talk from Vittori in the run-up to this fight. Do you feel that maybe he underestimated you at all? Uh, I'm sure it's... Surely nobody's underestimated me at this point. You know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think I'd like... It's hard for me to tell. I've never fought myself, right? But it, it's, it's... I think I fight differently to a lot of guys that they've fought before. I think I'm very hard to replicate in the gym just how I fight. I'd like to think my fight style is quite unique and uh, my attributes when I'm fighting are quite unique. So I don't think he underestimated me as much as was surprised at just, you know, how I am, who I am, what I get in there. And you said, including the champ, you think you're the most dangerous man in the division. Do you see Izzy holding on to the title against... Alex? He's very good, you know, bugger, <laughs> like, he's very good, I think, I think, like, his, his style of fighting, he's a very good defensive striker, and he has the physical attributes 
to do it, as well as the talent in the in the craft, like the eyes, the head for it. He's just good at what he does. He he can avoid danger like nobody's business, and uh, you know that makes him hard to dethrone, especially if you if you go to the points. You know, um, yeah, it it's oh, he's just very hard to dethrone. I think Pereira is gonna it's gonna be interesting because they've fought before, and the small gloves adds an element of. Um, that was different in their kickboxing fights, as well as Pereira's huge. Like he's got the range and the reach, and he's very offensive with it, so we're going to see that. But in saying that, they're wearing small gloves. Is he hit him in the kickboxing fights? Small gloves change things. It's, you see it every night. Like the small gloves changes fights. And you've spoken a lot about your improvements that you've made, your development. You know, if it does go down for a third time against Izzy, do you believe you're a different fighter to who you were the second time round? Yeah, definitely. Because I got he knocked me out in the first one, and then the second one was a really close decision that I I'm not butthurt about it, but I, you know, I think on another day it could have been my win. You know, it's uh, and mentally that's massive. It's uh, it's uh, it's, it's very hard to explain. How, how it feels to get knocked out and, and lose your belt like that. You know, it, it sucks. <laughs> you know, there's a bit of a learning process afterwards. A bit of a, you know, picking the pieces up sort of process. Yeah, and doubts and whatnot. And uh, I've, uh, I, I conquered most of them before that second fight. That second fight, I conquered the rest of them. And I think you could see that in this fight today. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Robert, right here on your left. Oh. Um, so you talk about wanting to move forward, and it, it seems the only problem with that is that you are ranked number one already, so that leaves the title. Um, is the play now then to wait for the winner of Adesanya Pereira? Is there anything else that would make sense? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, I try to stay out of... I don't really deal with the ladder and the rankings, politics, movements, and machinations. <laughs> You know, it's anybody's anybody's business who, who, how that works. I've got no idea. Never have really worried about it. It, uh, I just, I just beat the guys they put in front of me. It's been my simple plan since I started the sport. They put someone in front of me. I just beat them, and that's what I do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm lurking. <laughs> I am lurking for that gold, and I'll be here just waiting for that rematch or the next the next challenge. But I'm not just going to sit on the sidelines for years and chill. <laughs> this is what I do for a living. And uh, I enjoy doing it. I like putting on a show. So we'll wait and see. The future is unknown, really. Jared Cannonier lost his opponent recently. It might be a little too soon at its current date, but would there be any interest in that? Negative. It's uh, Christmas first. I've got a sore foot as well. I've got to stop kicking. It hurts. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I, I kicked him, I kicked him a bit, and my foot's sore now. So I wanna I wanna let that heal before uh, I get back in the in the gym and get to work. And then it's Christmas. I can only get so many Christmases. So I don't <laughs> honestly, there's an Australian card coming up next year that is in my backyard. Obviously, it makes perfect sense for me. Fair enough. Thanks very much. Yeah, right here in the middle. Um, so. In this fight, what, when was the moment that you realized that you actually won it? Was it at the decision or did you know beforehand? Um, well, you never know you win until the end. So, but I had complete control of the fight at the end of the first round. I, uh, I didn't feel danger. I didn't, I just felt free. I felt like I could do whatever I wanted and uh, kind of did that. It looked like he blocked your kick with the front of his, like, of his skull. <laughs> was that the moment that he actually got hurt with the kick? I got no, I got no. <laughs> Mate, here's a little, here's a little, you know, tidbit on, on how I kick. I fire and forget, mate. I'm not really, there's not a lot of, you know, technical like, I work and I practice the kick a lot. Well, all my kicks, all my skills and my craft, I'm always trying to get better and I'm working on them constantly. But I'm just aiming at his head. And I hope to break, hurt or injure whatever is in the way of it. It's, you know, it's, it's keep it simple, mate. I'm a simple man. 
<laughs> Last question for me. And you told us um, that you are chasing gold. So um, if you had the choice, would you rather have a, a, a title fight or um, let's say um, uh, Pereira wins or would you rather have the rematch against Izzy? No, I want to I want to move up. I want progress. I want progress. I'm not. I don't. I'm not. I don't have a grudge with Izzy. You know, I, I got over that. I'm too old for this now. You know, it's. I got over. I'm too old to have grudges like that. It's not personal. What we do isn't personal. It's. This is my craft. This is how I earn a living. I, I'd like to think we are modern day warriors, gladiators, and this is what we do. So there, there, there isn't a personal grudge there. I want progress. I want to move forward. I want to get that gold back. Rob, just here, right here. Um, a lot of people have been taking note of Izzy's performances recently and have been calling him born as a champion. You've been a champion before. Do you think it's your duty as a champion to still have exciting fights or not? Uh, that's a tricky question. Depends on <laughs> what's in the contract. <laughs> you know, I'd, no, I, I'm pretty sure he's just paid to win. You know, and that's the most important thing, whether it's boring or not. You can have the most exciting fight of the night. If you lose, no one's talking about you tomorrow. It, uh, how was your outlook on that when you're champion? Is that something that you took into note going to the fights? Nah, I didn't really worry about it. It's, and I've never worried about it in my fights. Because, because, and I say that because I'm blessed in a way that I fight excitingly. Like I like throwing a lot of punches and kicks and weaving a little bit. It's a... Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have exciting fights. But at the end of the day, winning is all that matters. It's as cold as it sounds, winning is all that matters. If I could just take someone down and hold them down until someone took them home, I would. <laughs> no, like, I love you fans. I love the fans. I love my fans. But I will happily hug someone on the ground for 25 minutes if that gets me the W. It's... Yeah, that's the sport we're in. And Izzy's a defensive striker. He always has been. And it's, I think the fans don't really, you know, appreciate how good at that he is. You can see comparatively, like, I'm, I'd like to think a very offensive striker. I'm good at what I do, I'd like to think. And he, he made it hard for me to hit him. I know. I hit mostly everyone. And finally, he fought all over the world, but it was very, very loud fans tonight. What did you make of the arena? Uh, yeah, hats off to Europe. I, uh, it made it feel like home, honestly. When I walked out, the crowd was going ballistic. It just, yeah, took me back to Sydney, you know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you, congratulations. Hey, Robert, to your left. You looked so much faster than Vittori during uh, your fight. Uh, were you aware of that speed advantage when you were working on your game plan for this fight? Uh, yeah, in... Um, I work on my speed every time I, I, I get in the, in the gym. It's, and when I say I work on speed, there isn't a specific drill. I punch a lot. Like, I can't explain to you how many jabs and crosses I've thrown this camp. Like, <laughs> just to get it faster, to get it straight, to get it accurate, to make it hurt. You don't understand how many times I've, I've thrown those punches. It's, that's why it's fast. You know, and that jab will work pretty well, as, right? <laughs> Everything worked really well. It's uh, yeah, that and that's that's why we work so hard to to we we do all the hard yards, we do all the preparation, and uh, my hats off to my coaching staff. This fight it, that we had, there were a lot of obstacles we had to get out of the way on the way here, and we we did it. You know, a huge shout out to Justin Lang at Live at Live Athletic. He he got me here in tip top shape. Fitter than ever, healthier than ever, and it was, you know, it was, it was on his back that we were able to do what we did tonight. Were you surprised by anything from Vettori today? No, I, I did my research. We, we worked hard. We worked really hard, mate. I, <laughs> I don't just rock up to these fights. <laughs> you know, I, I, we worked very hard, and I, that's why I had to push the fight back the first time, because I didn't want to rock up with a half, with, without any training. It, it's not the sort of fight. I'm not, I'm not that fighter, and this isn't the sort of fight you can have with him. You can't come to fight him half-cooked. You have to go there to kill him, because that's, what, that's the only way you're going to get him out of there. 
last one. Were you pissed by the fact that he jumped on, you know, Michael Bisping at the end of uh, your fight and he kind of take the microphone? I didn't notice. Sorry. That's fine. Congrats. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Went on a bit of a rant there. <laughs>